Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today to talk about a poem by Emily Dickinson, Love Reckons by Itself Alone, and so happy to welcome into the studio today Monica de la Torre, Elizabeth Willis, and Dag Bergman. And I'll start by just reading the poem, and then we'll go from there. Love reckons by itself alone, as large as I relate the sun to one who never felt it blaze, itself is all the like it has. Maybe we should hear it one more time because it's so short. Liz, would you like to read it? Sure. Love reckons by itself alone, as large as I relate the sun to one who never felt it blaze. Itself is all the like it has. Thank you. So because it's so short, let's break it down line by line, just starting with what associations come to mind with the first line, love reckons by itself alone. I'm tempted to ask what is being reckoned what is, how are we going to define alone? Um, and then there's that word love. So anywhere we want to go in the first line and starting with Monica. I'm struck by um, the at least two meanings that the word reckons have. Mm -hmm. um, has, sorry. Um, love reckons by itself and then alone separated uh, by M dashes reinforces that aloneness and the reckons might refer to love doing its accounting, counting what it has, or it's reflecting by itself alone. So that reckoning is very interesting to me. Um, also because further down the line we have a one to one who never felt the place. That one of course is a pronoun there but um, but 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 it's one. And the sense of aloneness of love is reinforced uh, throughout this very concise poem. Great, yeah. mm -hmm. thank you, Liz. What's coming to mind? Um, so many things. I mean, I think Dickinson's poems often kind of light up like a pinball machine for me like mm -hmm. there's so many um meanings seeming to explode at the same time so yeah thinking about reckoning as a as accounting and um you know almost like reporting on um and that as a solitary activity but love we i think tend to think of as a relational word like love is happening between two entities um so I think she's insisting that we think on it itself, that we don't, um, you know, sort of insert ourselves in that equation, but understand love as a force unto itself. Mm. Mm, interesting. Mm. Dan, do you have something you want to say about the first line? Dan says... Uh, the line says that there is no comparison possible, and yet poetry thrives by comparing things to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. holding those That's two great. opposites. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about love as a subject or love as a character, mm -hmm. you know, actively reckoning. If love is a subject, there's just so many different ways to encounter that relationship between love and reckons even those two words alone i i could just talk for now we could imagine what what's happening there mm -hmm. but let's go on to as large as i relate the sun so mm -hmm. the one question i have is regarding the quotation marks mm -hmm. in that line mm -hmm. um, and another question is the relationship between the two parts of the line separated by the m dash mm -hmm. there so Dan, do you have a thought about that? Either thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One way to read it 
is that the poet has never been in love <laughs> before and asks what it's like and and it's as if she had never felt the sun. Mm. One mm. way to read it is that the poet has never been in love before and asks what it's like, and it's as if she had never felt the sun. Wow, amazing. That's encompassing so much from mm. beyond in that one line. Um, Monica, thoughts on the second line and the quotations? Well, um, one thing that's happening for sure is that you have quotations and then the verb in the second part of the verse, of the line, relate the sun, agree with I, right? So I relate the sun. And so there's a shift there between love described in the third, per in the third person, addressed in the third person, and then the shift to the first person. And then as the poem progresses, it's kind of like you don't there's i love what you said about the pinball machine because it can go what follows in the poem can can relate back to the second line or the first line and it seems like it's totally disjointed it's a poem that's almost in two parts mm -hmm. and these two parts speak to each other but don't they're almost like arranged power tactically and the one thing that does correspond is this as large as i relate the sun to one who never felt it blaze but why is it divided or separated and um, isolated within quotations. It's also, I love something that Dan said earlier about comparison, as large as I, it feels like. Yeah, it's there's a comparison there. Um, lar as large as I almost feels non-idiomatic as well. Mm -hmm. So there's something out of proportion and disjointed. Um, and it's, of the it's positing or pointing to the possibility of relationality and yet that second clause is, or that second part that other part of the equation is not there so it's enacting the very thing that the poem is about i'm, I'm getting ahead of that second mm. line but i can't not no, I um, love that about how the, the disjointed and the disproportional, mm -hmm. there's something impossible mm -hmm. that about something one has never experienced or about even trying to s speak about love reckoning, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Dan says, as large as I also means love takes up the whole of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are <laughs> such great <laughs> thoughts. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking um, about the f just the fact formally that the line begins with the utterance um, mm -hmm. means that we sort of are hearing it without understanding where the voice is coming from. Mm. And so we also have to kind of perform a reckoning with like, is that the sun speaking? Is that mm -hmm. the I that is the poet? And how is this part that's quoted um, different from the other lines? Um, is this, yeah, is it the sun? Is it love? Is it I? And there's that apparent contradiction in the I being incredibly small, you know, a one letter word. Mm -hmm. um, so as large as I, like, makes us see the contradiction of that so that we have to sort of scale out from the microscopic to the telescopic. Mm. Mm. When I think about the um, quotations, I'm immediately wondering, well, who's speaking? 
So how many speakers are in the poem? So one way is to imagine the, the poet as a speaker, but I'm also curious how else that might be read. If, if you know, how, how many characters? Is love a character? Is the speaker of the poem another character? And then this disjunction between, so we start with love reckons by itself alone. That sounds clear. It sounds declarative. And we think what might follow in, with, from a different kind of a poet mm -hmm. is then an explanation of how love reckons by itself. But mm -hmm. that's the only part that is clear. And then mm -hmm. it, it keeps disintegrating or re mm -hmm. moving in, in multiple directions at the same time. As large as I, and then that word relate is really, mm -hmm. a, I have a big question mark about that word relate because again, it seems incongruent deliberately. As large as I relate the sun and then it's, it's like a, Mm -hmm. The pinball machine metaphor is yeah, really, I never imagined Emily Dickinson playing pinball, but now I am, and I'm really, bing, bing. I really like that. Dan has something to say? Jo uh, so far, at least. Uh, love is a character because it reckons. Mm -hmm. So back to that word reckons, like what, so one idea is that the, the reckoning of a speaker of a poem who's maybe never been in love. But what is there? Are there more thoughts on back to the word reckon? Love reckons by itself alone. Well, I think I think of reckoning as also a way of thinking about proportion as well as accumulation. And you know, again, I'm I'm kind of was struck by what Dan said about how love is this force that completely overwhelms um, mm -hmm. the self, and so thinking that it's you know, with this tiny, tiny, I mean, even if you look typographically at the space that an I takes up, there's no letter that takes up less space mm -hmm. <laughs> than an I. Mm -hmm. um, and yet it stands in for this vast interiority, this vast interior of um, sort of overwhelming emotion mm -hmm. or the p potential for overwhelming mm -hmm. emotion. Mm -hmm. So another way to read it would be to know oneself love that can only happen in a state of inner reflection apart from what's happening outside in other words in order to know itself love or a person experiencing love or the absence of love can only make these decisions and reckonings and understandings alone mm. or it could be uh, love is in its own category and there might be all kinds of complicated reasons why something is uh, possibly going to work or not going to work. But it, but when love is in the mix, none of those criteria matter really. Like love is hmm. it, it's its own reality hmm. beyond comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then to be beyond comparison seems also to reinforce this idea of aloneness, right? You're mm. like unmatched, peerless, matchless. Mm. Um, wow. No parallel, no no companion to it, right? It's by mm. itself. Um, I keep thinking that that I, love, and the sun might all be the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that, that um, to me, the speaker of the poem is overwhelmed by love. And um, is is facing this impossibility or the challenges of having to communicate, relate the sun to one who never felt it blaze. Well, if you've never felt it, these are just empty words. Mm -hmm. You can't. You're going to be by your just speaking, to, talking to yourself, because there's no correspondence um, and, and and dialogue uh, between the listener and the speaker. And so. Um, Dan, yes. Dan, Dan says the loneliness of being so big may work for the sun, whose planets never touch it, but it won't work for love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, also thinking about t the word touch in that is interesting because that touch, these things can touch each other through the mechanism of the poem that do that don't touch each other in mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. 
I was thinking of of, of the quotation marks mm -hmm. as large as I and how they sort of do relate to relate, right? Like you could read the second line without the quotation marks and it would make sense. And so I'm thinking um, somehow I have an image of, of this Matisse painting that I just saw at an exhibition at MoMA, the Red Studio. Oh, I'd mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. And how some of the some of the pedestals or tables in which there are plants mm -hmm. and pots. Mm -hmm. The pots, if you look at them, seem to be inside the painting within the painting, and they're also mm -hmm. outside of the painting. Mm -hmm. It's just this beautiful, like, um, space within a space within a space. This meta quality, and so to me, this as large as I seems to be doing that. It's like it relates to what's outside it, and it doesn't, because maybe largeness is is a perception that can only come through the comparative process of establishing size through the relations with other things but at the same time um as as you've all been saying it really does isolate the character the 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 speaker of this phrase so it's just it's both in relation and outside of relation just I don't know. I'm, well, I'm repeating think, things that have been said. I think but. that's really useful, the image mm -hmm. of the painting with the image in the painting in which something is embedded as a way to talk about meta-poetry, mm -hmm. like the different layers of the poem. Um, let's go on to the second two lines, which we talked about a little, but a little more closely, and then we'll, we'll get to final thoughts pretty quickly. To one who never felt the blaze, itself is all the like it has. So... The idea that one who's never experienced love, it's beyond language, we can't put it into words. Anything else coming up for us in the last two lines? Liz? Well, I, yeah. I'm kind of again struck by the ways that the poem accepts and um, allows itself to dwell in contradiction in the sense that um, it is in some ways about reaching for likeness as a way of relating something, like actually like telling it. And there's so much sonic likeness within mm -hmm. it. We've got, you know, it's about aloneness and singularity, but we've got alone and sun and sun to one and blaze and has. So there are all these rhymes and slant rhymes mm -hmm. um, that are, you know, forms of likeness, mm -hmm. um, at least within the sonic field of the poem. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Dan? Um, Dan says uh, that one is capitalized increases the sense of loneliness. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I want to know more about that. Maybe we can come back to that if there if there's something, there's another layer mm -hmm. to that. Maybe in the final words. Dan, mm -hmm. Dan also wrote another question for you. Uh, does anyone else hear an echo of "Tell all the truth, but tell it slant"? Mm -hmm. I asked him mm -hmm. which part, and he said, "As lightning to the children, eased with explanation, kind." The truth must dazzle gradually or every man be blind. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I think wow, so. Wow, another great poem. <laughs> yeah. Great poem. Wow. Yeah. To one who never felt a blave, itself is all the like it has. Monica, did you have something else you wanted to say about those lines? Yes, I was thinking of, of like here. Itself is all the like it has. So again, um likeness as as um this has been speaking of likeness but there's also this notion of like as like as a form of care love tenderness affection mm -hmm. itself is all the like it has like to not have a like now we can't think of that word without thinking of social media right like <laughs> thumbs up like mm -hmm. love heart but I wonder how much of that is also in here, um, that, that, that meaning of like. Mm -hmm. Itself is all the mm -hmm. like it has. I yeah, was thinking about love. that too because there are two itselfs, two I words, right? Mm -hmm. Itself mm -hmm. in the first line and the last mm -hmm. line, and the first one is accompanied by love and the second by like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is incredible. 
That's right. <laughs> yeah. Itself is the only like it has. Yeah. Itself in the first line of the poem. Mm -hmm. Incredible. <laughs> Dan, Dan said something similar um, to you. He said, uh, like is love light. Right. <laughs> <laughs> love begins the poem and it's like by the end. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to final words. Um, Monica, are you ready? Any any additional, anything you want to say about this poem? Mm. I know I'm going to keep thinking of this poem, for sure. It's so incredible. Um, it's, it's a poem that also seems maybe aware of a possible reader. There is this notion of relating to one who never felt it blaze, like the incommunicability mm -hmm. that's built into the poem. Can the poem speak about something that the reader hasn't experienced? Mm -hmm. So there's like this intensity on the part of the speaker that maybe the speaker is reckoning with the fact that won't be communicated. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Liz? Um, well, I'm fascinated by the way that Dickinson uses units, both the phrase and the line and um, sort of the couplet in this case and the whole poem. And if you read the second to the last line in and of itself, it sort of looks almost like a dedication to one who never felt it blaze. Mm. Um, oh, almost wow. as if the poem mm. would be someone who has experienced love trying to describe it to someone, perhaps even the object of love, mm. who has not felt it. Mm -hmm. That's like an invitation to poets to write the poem beginning to one who never felt it blaze. Yeah. Mm. Great. Dan, final thought on this poem for mm. now. I think it helps to read the poem as the poet's own experience. There is no one who has never felt the sun. Blind people have never seen it, but everyone has felt it. Well, wow. Mm. I love that. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My final word is, itself is all the like it has. Um, it could have easily, the word love could have replaced like, and because it's like and not love, I'm thinking of like as in resemblances. So mm -hmm. love only has its own resemblance mm -hmm. would be another way to read mm -hmm. it. So thank you all for being here and talking about this poem. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks Lou. Thank